Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another edition of Film Fanatic Live. So, this is another video continuing in the vein of some of the other videos where I've just been talking about all the new movies I've been seeing. This Today's movie is about my... It's a movie that I bought for my last trip to Boo Moose uh, about... I think it was about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was about two weeks ago. I went to Bull Moose and really lucked out. Got some sweet movies. Got some great uh, albums. I went to the Bull Moose in Bangor, and I've been really excited. They've been that place has always been pretty decent for movies. Their music selection is pretty outstanding. I'm amazed by the things I can find there, but their movie selection has always been okay. But the last two times I went there, and especially this last time uh, I went, it was really good. And I struck gold. I found all these movies that I've been wanting to see and I had heard about. And a bunch of movies that looked really, really, really cool. And, uh, you know, they really, um, they have a really big movie selection, the one in Bangor. And obviously every store is pretty similar, but there's also, each store is is uniquely different from from one to the next it's kind of interesting so this today's show is about the last movie that i bought that i just watched last night for the first time so but before i get into that i'm gonna usually like to incorporate music things here into this channel usually you know i have other projects and stuff that i play in but i pretty much just when i talk about projects or bands that I'm involved in or, or with, it's usually uh, always related to quantum, just because I've said it's always been a natural, uh, for me, a, it goes hand in hand with my love of movies. It's it's totally part of that. It's just a natural extension. I don't really see any difference between, you know, uh, my love of films with with my love of that band and I always see the influences from both, and I always, and every now and then that comes up with people who happen to dig some of the weird music that we make, where people will say, make some kind of reference to to uh, a visual thing or something with the music itself, or where they think it's uh, has a cinematic quality to it, or it's very related to film. And when, whenever people do say that, that really warms my heart because that is the biggest, uh, the, all of these films are the biggest uh, source of inspiration for, for that band and for me to write music and to try to create new things and to challenge myself, you know, and it's all taken from movies. Obviously, there's tons and tons of albums and bands that I listen to on a regular basis and and all kinds of music that I'm influenced by but it's always first and foremost it's always everything that encapsulates uh, my love of film that, that is easily the biggest kind of influence on on everything that I do as far as in that world So coming up in the quantum world, I will be, uh, we, we got some some events coming up. This Saturday, our next show, we will be playing at the Rockland uh, Block Party, the Rockland uh, Solstice. They basically turn, shut down the Main Street uh, in Rockland and they have a bunch of, you know, bands play, playing throughout the area. They have vendors, food vendors, food trucks, and, and it's usually a pretty pretty fun time. We've done it. We've done that gig for for a long time, pretty much since the inception of the band, six years or so. It's pretty crazy. Uh, there was probably yeah one summer that we didn't do it, and that was because of COVID. But usually we do it every year, and uh, it's always a blast. We basically just set up and play for a couple hours or so. And I don't know, over the years, it's been a thing I think that's helped us develop as a band. It's always been a gig where, you know, we might have gotten a couple of, a couple of new fans along the way. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's usually a good time. And I think it's pretty good, you know, 
uh, exposure, and uh, you know we just kind of do our thing. There's a lot of variety of music. There's, you know, there's probably uh, I don't know maybe six or seven bands that they have set up outside, and they're all spread out up and down Main Street, and it's a you know huge radius of of uh, space. So they'll have you know all kinds of music and uh, you know kind of represented. So it's it's pretty cool. So looking forward to doing that. So we'll be doing that at um, four o'clock on uh, Saturday this coming this coming Saturday. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna do a little bit of promotion for that coming up here. So yeah, looking forward to that. And then we have we have some other things coming up where we're gonna be doing another show where uh, it's another actually another gig that we've done for a long time that I really really love it's kind of one of my favorite gigs if not my favorite gig to do but we always play a concert at the Camden Amphitheater every summer and we will be doing that in a couple of weeks and that's a super fun time because we it's oh it's on a Sunday and we basically set up uh, around uh, we start playing around mm, around 12 31 and we play for a couple hours and the amphitheater is just when it comes to like outside gigs or you know playing outside in general i think it's the most uh the the best place around the acoustics are great or the acoustics are amazing because of the of the the way the the marquee is shaped and you you have all of this great you have this really awesome wall behind you and it's kind of insulated, so the acoustics are really great. And it's uh, you know it's in it's kind of tucked back in the woods, and the ocean is right there. It's it's such an amazing spot, and we've done that gig for a long time. And it's pretty loose too. We just basically set up and play for a couple of hours, and it's it's always you know always fun, and we always get to uh, kind of do our thing and and try out some new material. And we've made some cool f- fans over the years doing that gig. Had a lot, I have a lot, lots of great memories playing that, sh- playing that gig, and I always look forward to doing that. We used to always do it in uh, August, like late summertime. But the last couple times we've that we've been doing it, we've been doing it in June for er- various reasons. That spot really gets booked up, uh, you know, for the summer. So we got uh, an earlier slot because the rest of the summer had gotten booked up. So, so that will be coming up pretty soon. And then another show that we have coming up, we're going to be doing another radio show with Quantum. We did it, uh, I think it was last, yeah, it was last month we played a live set on WRFR and on my uh, my friend Spencer Roulard's electronic music show, and it was on a Saturday. He's got this really great show where he does a lot of modular synth electronic music, but then he also plays other artists. But we had gone, basically we went into the studio and, and played a live set. And he is a, he's a sound man by by day. That's his trade. He works for a sound company, so his whole thing is running sound. So he's like really, really good at running sound. And uh, so he had got us to do a show, and he, he had a special setup for us. We, we basically set up right in his studio, which was cool, but... It it wasn't uh, it's a tiny little space, but it actually wasn't that bad. And it's just the two of us, so we didn't have to bring very much. And we 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 played live on the radio. And unfortunately, some it's things some things that happened, and the show wasn't recorded. But uh, from what I heard from folks who had listened to the show, they said the sound quality was really really good. So, and you know, playing on the radio is a lot of fun, but a lot of the times. You know, it's not really uh, ideal for sound. It's not really, like, they're not really equipped for how to really... You know, there's not anybody usually uh, on board that's knowledgeable on how to run sound, you know, especially for, if it's going live. But Spencer is the exception. He's really, really great at that. So we had this idea of, of doing it again at some point. But this time, make sure it's recorded and maybe it's something like if the performance happens to be good or or maybe it won't be but hopefully if the if the sh- if performance is good we can record it and then it's something we can use and share and post and use as a promotional thing cuz i heard from other uh some a couple of friends that had listened to it and they said the the actual sound quality was was really good 
and I really like working with Spencer. So we're going to do another show on his another show on his show with a live set in uh, July. We're we're going to play on his on his show and uh, make sure that you know hopefully it gets recorded this time and we can use it. So stay tuned for that. That'll be something coming up. And then we have another show coming up which I'm super excited about. I was super, ex- super surprised, kind of blown away that we got the gig, but we have a gig where we're going to be doing a quantum set at Primo in, in Rockland, Maine, or slash Owl's Head. Primo is like, you know, one of the greatest restaurants on a plate on the face of the earth. It's, it's amazing. And so I've, been fortunate enough to play a bunch of gigs there and so they have this new series that they started a couple of they they it's been going for about two years now or so they started this new series of where they have this outdoor bar it's a little more casual of a of of an environment they have an outdoor bar and then they have uh music on sundays and it's a really awesome series. It's a really beautiful spot. They grow all of their own food, so the gardens are just amazing, and and it's you know it's all self-contained. And so we're going to be doing a quantum set there in July. So I'm really excited about that. That's going to be a whole new thing. Again, a lot of times I'm really surprised with this band by certain things that will happen, you know, for good or bad, but mostly good as far as us being able to move into new venues or try out some new things and and then they happen to go pretty well or it could be in a place uh, where I did not really think we could really do a show at so very excited Primo was one of those places I always thought maybe our music I think it has a uh, you know uh, there's parts of the music I feel it has a it has a commercial appeal to it you know, I like to think the music got a melodic, or it's got a melodic hook, or a, melod- or a, a dance hook to it. But there's also a lot of aspects to our music that is, you know, very on the fringe side of things. That you know isn't for everyone, and it might be a little too wacky, it might be a little too weird for some people. So it's a combination of all those things. So I always thought, well, maybe that aspect of our music would 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 probably be too much for us to, you know. Uh, would prevent us from playing a, a place like Primo. But luckily, it worked out. So we do have a gig there. So stay stay tuned for that. That will be coming up. The other show I'm really, really excited about, which just came in, there's a really awesome new bar that just opened in Belfast about uh, probably a year ago. Sophie. And it's a tiny little bar right in Belfast. It's right in downtown Belfast, right in the heart of the town. And uh, it's this little shoebox, little rest- uh, bar. It's not even, Well, they do have food there, but it's mainly a restaurant, uh, mainly a bar. And it's this tiny little place. It feels like when you go in there, it's like a, a, a little bar you would find in like Brooklyn or something, Brooklyn, New York. But super cool place, real intimate. It's very small, but really cool layout. I love the... The feel of the place and I've seen music in there and when I had heard that they were gonna have music in there I thought wow how how is that possible because it's so tiny but then you know if they have a rock band in there it might be just you know too loud or too much and I went in there to see some music to check it out and I was really impressed with how it worked out and it was crazy packed in there and I've been to this bar a couple of times for drinks and just kind of go in there and really like it. It's a very cool spot. And I've gone to see two music events there. And the last time I went there was this past Saturday and uh, had a really good time. So we're going to be playing there in July also. We're going to be doing a quantum set and it's going to start like, uh, you know, uh, 7.30 to about 9.30, like a two or three hour set. So I'm super excited about doing that. They do have DJs every now and then that play there, and they the owner is a DJ by trade. So there is a little bit of that kind of thing tied to that place anyway, uh, you know, with, as far as dance music. So we'll see. We'll see how things go. I'm really excited about playing there. It's a very cool place. Uh, I've been trying a little bit to, you know, trying to get our leg in there because I thought it would be a really cool 
place to play, a good prospect, you know, and it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a great little bar. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited about that, and that will be coming up in July. So the last movie that I bought in my stack from Bull Moose, and I've been doing videos for all of the um, movies I bought at the sale at Opera House Video. And I watched, I started watching some of those last night. Uh, and I, I don't know, there was one that I started watching. It was kind of terrible. I'll probably, I might just do a show on that, but we'll see. But this is a, a freaking masterpiece. This is The Strange Vice of Mrs. of Miss Warder. The Strange Vice of Miss Warder. This is a 1971 Giallo exploitation movie. Just I have to say that this is the best giallo film that I've ever seen. This movie is just so incredible. So incredibly suspenseful. The, the, the story is so interesting. It's really sleazy. The, the kills in this movie are really great. It has a horror element to it. It's, uh, but it's so damn good. And folks out there who like I've done a, I've done a lot of coverage of giallo. Uh, giallo is a is a particular it's an Italian style of filmmaking, and it started in the you know mid to late '60s and carried over into the decades of the '70s and then also the '80s. And giallo is a really unique style. It's it's exclusively Italian. And basically, giallo is the the premise of the whole kind of the the whole genre is it's kind of based off of the concept of like your classic you know murder mystery story and a lot of it is taken from say like the classic British murder mystery uh, genre like most probably most well known as uh, like f from from like Agatha Christie you know the murder the murder mystery uh, the Who Done It story, where there's lots of suspense. Giallo is kind of that version of what Agatha Christie is. So there's always a lot of mystery in that's in, in, in you know in regards to the style. There's always some kind of unsolved mystery uh, around murders or people who are disappearing. There's all these interesting plot twists. They, they tend to be really dark. They have an element of where there's a little bit... There's always like some kind of sleazy element to it. They they also have elements of horror. And, and particularly, this one I feel has a slasher element to it, which is really awesome. But really, a Giallo is just like a hard-boiled you know, murder mystery movie. And I also feel like the, uh, the work of Alfred Hitchcock has a tremendous influence on the giallo world and i and i've been i've always been a fan of of these films in this style you know this is definitely part of the exploitation world and it's always been one of my favorites and i you know i've seen a lot of these movies over the years but the last couple of years i've been buying a lot of these movies and this movie is from 1971 and i have to say that this is definitely the best you know a lot of the directors that were that are well known in the giallo world uh, Dario Dario Gento is one who later got more. Uh, you know, obviously he dove more into horror films. You know, Suspiria and Tenebrae and, and and Inferno. But his whole world in the beginning was definitely in that murder mystery style, the Giallo world. Um, other other directors that are really popular in like that style are uh, Jess Franco from Spain. Made tons of Giallo films in the 60s and 70s. Just amazing. So, and this movie is without a doubt the best one I I think I've ever seen. Like, it is just top shelf from, from beginning to end. And this film was directed by Sergio Martino, who is another big legend in the world of the Giallo. I had heard about this film for, for a couple of years, had never seen it before. I just watched this last night, 
And I was just blown away by how suspenseful this movie is and just how well shot it is. And just so... Um, just so well conceived this movie is and it's got a gr it's got all these great plot twists the ending is just just so good beautifully shot you know and the giallo thing is really interesting because i feel like it has this appeal for people who are you know maybe not into the exploitation world but there's always this thing of where it's just, it, the films are so stylized you know they have a real kind of uh 60s 70s vibe and they just have this very unique style and there's a lot of the way, a lot of the camera work in a lot of giallo films where there's the use of where a lot of these giallo films take place in these really exotic places and just these gorgeous areas but there's all of this amazing cinematography of where you'll see you know lots of shadow and lots of darkness um and this film is so beautifully shot like the locations in, in this film are just so great and uh it's pretty violent it's pretty gory and it does have elements of horror i would it definitely has elements of horror. That's another trait or characteristic of a lot of Giallo films. They definitely have elements of horror. And I would say that this definitely has a slasher vibe to it. Which, again, is my favorite genre. So this is like the perfect combination. This movie is just incredible. Uh, like, again, huge fan of this style of, of Giallo. There's a really great... Uh, this is a two-disc... Actually, no, I should say it's a one-disc set, but it has the soundtrack. The music is just incredible. It has the soundtrack for the film on here, which is really sweet. And then it uh, also has um, an amazing collection of special features, which I started watching last night. It was on the later side, but I, didn't, I started watching it. So I got a little, uh, quite a bit more... To go, but there's a really awesome interview with Sergio Martino, the director on here, who again, like I said, is like a legend. I've definitely uh, I've known of his name. I, I, I know of him pretty well, and he's still he's still um, you know doing it. He's still cranking it out. He's he's uh, he's in his 80s. He's 84. Um, so. But just amazing, just amazing. The and the list of movies that he's done is just is just wild. Um, so many movies. One movie that he's really, really well known for, it might be his biggest movie, uh, is Torso. And uh, that's such a killer, uh, killer movie. I I saw that a long time ago, and that is a movie. That is definitely a movie I saw back when I was a kid. Uh, in the VHS days, but it's been years, so it would seeing it now, it would be like seeing it all all over again for the first time. But it's it's a masterpiece, and that came out in '73. That's a little bit more of a horror movie, slasher movie than probably the Giallo thing, but it's still very much a Giallo. And of course, the strange vice of Mr. Winder of Miss Winders. This uh, came out '71. All the colors of the black, 1972. Island of the Fishman, 1979. Mountain of the Mountain of the Cannibals, the Mountain of the Cannibal Gods, 1978. Uh, yeah, just so many freaking movies. Lock Your Vice in a Locked Room, 1972. Hands of Steel. The The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, 1971. Sex with a Smile. After the Fall of 2019, which is a crazy title, that came out in 83. Trainer on the Beach, 1984. Um, just wild. Just wild. The Scorpions with Two Tails in 1982. The Violent Professionals in 73. The Great Alligator, the Great Alligator River in 1979. So many great movies. A Man Called Blade in 1977. Cream Puffs in 81. Spaghetti at Midnight in 1981. I mean, just so many freaking movies. It's a really awesome interview with Sergio Martino in here because he was talking about, you know, the, this distinct style that's known as Giallo that's uniquely, like, uh, uniquely original 
and exclusively it's like an Italian style. But he was talking about the giallo style and then also the spaghetti western style that was a, you know, a huge genre also, the western style uh, in, in Italy at the time. And, you know, uh, Sergio Leone the, being the, the biggest name in the spaghetti western uh, genre. You know, movies from the late 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s. And the spaghetti western itself, or the spaghetti genre being, you know, a massive genre uh, into itself. So there's, you know, so many... Um, so many directors in that field. Probably the most well-known is Sergio Leone. So, um, so damn good. But he was talking, Sergio Martino was talking about how they really, he felt the Italians really perfected those styles. He felt that the the style of the Spaghetti Western was, kind of came into its own. And he felt that what, all of these Ita great Italian directors, they perfected that style. He said they made it unique. It's a unique, uh, it's, a, it's a, a very unique style of filmmaking. One of my favorite, you know, of course, it's, it's the Western, you know, style about, you know, with in, it's in the Western uh, movie making genre. And um, he felt that they perfected that style. And then... When the Giallo thing, he felt that that was really unique too. And he felt the thing that he's most proud of in the world of cinema and also in the Italian world is how the Italians perfected the art of the Spaghetti Western and then also the Giallo uh, style, where they're both very unique, very distinct, and, uh, you know, just so a part, uh, this, just such a part of that of that country so really interesting really interesting but the transfer of this movie is just incredible this is blu-ray 4k this was released on by severin it's a newer it's a newer release too i think this just came out all kinds of special features i just started watching there's a 40 minute interview with sergio martino on here that is just like in, amazing so super excited to have to have bought this movie this is, like I said in the beginning of the show, this is my favorite Giallo uh, exploitation movie that I've seen. Just so suspenseful. It it has like a Hitchcock vibe. It's got that, you know, that all the great characteristics that you want in a Giallo film. Beautifully shot. It's really sleazy. It's, the kills are really great. The uh, The storyline is so great. The atmosphere is so awesome. The, the cinematography, breathtaking. And the music is so amazing. I'm so excited that this came with the, the soundtrack. So very much looking forward to listening to that uh, probably today. So this is Jason Dean. So thanks again for your support. And uh, check out this video to get a chance. Incredible movie. Thank you. Peace.